Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to overlay PNG images using OpenCV. We will also learn how to overlay logos on images and on webcams. Along with that, we will also learn how to rotate images with a simple function and create this awesome looking gear mechanism. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, then do check out our premium courses that are now available in packs. The link will be in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So we are here in our PyCharm project and the first thing we have to do is to go to files, file settings and then the projects and the interpreter and we are going to add our package and we just have to install cvzone and it will install the numpy and opencv for us as it is one of the um, it includes these dependencies okay so now that this is installed we can close it and this is the main file do we need this let's delete it and we are going to create a new file and we will call it let's say overlay image so we will try it with webcam we will try it with the image we will try some logos as well so all of the resources are available in this folder and what you can do is oh I put it in the resources folder it should be outside so uh, this is outside and this resources folder you can download from our website's computer vision zone so this will be available to download so all you have to do is register and then you will be able to access these files so we have an image for a drone this is again png this is gear also png we have a logo you can see this here is transparent and then we have some images to overlay on so this is a nature image and then we have an image of a pc so we are going to overlay it on them so the first thing we will do is to import cv zone and then we are going to import CV2. So these are the two libraries. And if we want to create our own image, if we want to put it on a blank image, then we can also import NumPy. So I will show you how you can do that as well. Okay, so let's start with the background image. So we will call it image back is equals to CV2.imread. We are going to read from the resources folder and we are going to get which one let's pick the nature nature.jpg then we have to add our frontal image the one that we want to overlay so we will write here image front is equals to cv2.imread and we are going to get it from the resources folder and we will say it is gear.png now the thing is that normally when you add your image I am read it will import it with three channels so what you have to do is you have to write here cv2 dot I am read and you have to write unchanged so it will import the fourth channel which is the alpha channel which has the transparency information so we need to import that as well okay so once that is done now, believe it or not, we just need one single line of code and this should work. But before we do that, let's uh, look at our images. So we will write here, I am show and we will write here that this is the image. Let's say and we will write here image back and we will write cv2 dot wait key. And we will put a zero because we want to see it as long as we don't close it so this will show us the okay it's trying to run the main we need to right click and run okay so this is our image it's a small image I believe 640 by something and then we can also look at our image front so this is our image front that we want to overlay so let's go ahead and do that so here we are going to write image result you can call it whatever you want then we can write CV zone dot overlay PNG and here you have to give in your input arguments 
the first one is image back and the second one is image front and then you have to give in the position so by default it is at zero zero but here for example i will say 20 and 20. so it will move it to that location so let's run that and i did not replace it you need to replace it here and that's it so there you go so now you can see the gear is overlaid on the image so normally if you use slicing so for example if i do this that my image back at let's say 0 and 300 by 0 and 300 because 300 i'm saying because the size of this image is 300 by 300 the the size of this image you can see here it's 300 by 300 and it's 8 bits 8 bits just means the values range from 0 to 255 so that's the idea so if i do it by slicing and i write it like this that this is basically image front then it will work but it will not uh, we will have to actually comment this we will copy and paste and we will remove the unchanged so if we run this now it should work technically and we can print out the image back but it will not have the transparency so let's run that there you go so here you can see it overlays your image that's fine but it does not remove the gray part so this is the issue with normal importing and slicing so then this function from cv zone uh, which is overlay png basically takes care of, of all of this so if you want to know more about this function you can press the control button and left click and it will take you to the function and you can see uh, what kind of method is being used here so i'm not going to go into the details of this uh, all you have to know is this is the image back image front and this is the position that you have to give so what i will do is i will remove all of this and we will restore it to our original uh, what do you call states and no there is image results we have to put it here and anything else no okay so there you go so now you can see the gray part is gone and if i wanted to i can move it around and i can also resize the image if i wanted it smaller so for example i can say image front uh, is equals to cv2 dot resize and i want to resize the image front and i don't want to give it a specific number so i will write here zero zero and then i will write none and then here i will give it the scale so i want to scale it 0 0.5 both on x and y axis so this is how you can scale it so if i run it now uh, that will be much smaller and i can move it around as well so for example i can say 100 and let's say 150 so let's run that and now you can see the gear is moved but do remember that if you don't put correct values and if it goes out of the image it will give an error so for example if i write thousand it will not run it will give you an error so you have to uh, judge this by yourself you can see here could not broadcast input array from shape 150 153 into shape 0 153 so if it's giving an error like this it means you are going out of bounds so you need to dial it back and uh, think about the sizing of it so right now this image is 150 by 150 because it was 300 by 300 before and then we scaled it down to 0 0.5 so this way you can know that how much space do you have within your image so this is the basic idea of how you can overlay and if you want to use your own image you can do that too for example i can write here that my image back is equals to cv2 dot uh, not cv2 numpy numpy dot ones and then we have to give in the size so here the weird thing is that you have to give the height first so it's 480 by 640 let's say and then there will be three channels for bgr and then we will give in the numpy dots unsigned integers of 8 bits again this just means 0 to uh, 255 and this will give you ones and if you want to make it white 
you can multiply it by 255 and all of them will become white. So one is, uh, is a value from 0 to 255. So one will be very dark. It's almost black. So if we run this now, you can see now it's on a white image and uh, you can see our uh, gear as well. Again, if I remove this, it will be black. There you go. So that's the basic idea of how you can import a PNG image. Okay, so next step is to add our logo. So let's say that we have this image of PC and we want to add our logo to it. So whether it's a webcam, whether it's an image, sometimes we need to add our own logo at the bottom, somewhere in the corner, or maybe even in the middle. So how can we do that? So we have the CV zone logo over here. So you can see here it's transparent. So it should work and it should show the backside of it as well. So what we will do is we will create a new file and we will call it, what should we call it? Let's call it overlay logo. So we are going to copy all of this and we'll paste it here. And the idea of the logo is pretty much the same as we saw earlier. Now we are going to remove this and we will bring the image back and we can remove the NumPy. We will not need that for now. And here we are going to write PC. This is the image. And then we have the logo uh, PNG. So this is the main idea. So we can scale it down if we want to, but let's see what it does. Let's run it. Uh, what happened? Oh, we have to right click and run it again. There you go. So now this is our logo. But the thing is that we don't want to give it manual values to go and settle down. So basically it is supposed to be here in the bottom left corner but we don't want to manually tell it uh, to go at these specific pixel values. So we want to automate that process. For example, if we have multiple images of different sizes, so we want it to find the correct position by itself and then stick it over there, uh, again, to the bottom left. So how can we do that? It's fairly simple. We have to find the size of our images. So what we will do is we will say that the height front and the width front and the channel front is equals to, or you can remove the channel front, it's up to you. You can write here image front dot shape. So this will give us the size and then height back and you can say background or back as you wish. Uh, width back and the channel back is equals to our image back, image back dot shape. So this is basically the idea. This will give us the values. Now all we have to do is we have to fix them here. So this is the position. So the width will be zero because uh, we want it to be in this position. So at the starting point, the width will be zero. So let's do that. So there you go. Now the width is zero. And then we want to push it all the way at the bottom. So we cannot just give an height. So uh, we know that this is the image back and we can take the total height of it and we can simply paste it here, but this should not work. Uh, it, it will give you an error because it's going out of the image. So what we need to do is we need to subtract the height of our uh, logo image. So we will do that. And if we run that now, there you go. So now it's perfectly aligned and uh, at the bottom corner. So now even if I change the size of this, let's say I made it 0 0.25 and again 0 0.25, then it will stick to that position. Now it is dynamically generated and we do not need to worry about uh, the hard coding placement of this logo. So that's the basic idea. I can increase the size as well. 1.5 and 1.5. Let's run that and it is going out of dimension, so it is giving us an error. Maybe 1.1, 1.1. Still, uh, it is going out, so it is giving an error. Let's try 1.1. One, one. Yeah, now it's fine, yeah. Here you can see, it's, it's really big, the logo itself, so that's why it's going outside. But if it was smaller, again, you can go beyond one as well. So 
that should work but i think 0 0.3 will be a good value if we wanted to add the logo for this instance yeah i think that looks good okay so this is how you can overlay a logo now we are going to look at how we can overlay it on the webcam so let's go ahead and right click and create a new file and we are going to write here overlay webcam so because we want to know whether this method is real time or not because if it's not real time and it's taking a lot of power uh, then we cannot use it with other methodologies because it will be uh, it will slow down our other processes okay so what we can do is we can copy the the logo part because we want to overlay our logo uh, on our webcam so what we will do is we will keep everything aside so we will write here while true then we are going to do all of this now we do need to add our webcam first so here at the top i'm going to write cv2 dot uh, video capture and we want to get it from device number zero and we will store it in cap if you wanted to you could change the dimensions of it cap dot set but i think it will be fine we have 640 by 480 uh, by default so we will use that and here in the image part we are going to write in the while uh, loop part we are going to write success and image is equals to cap dot read so it will read our image and instead of back image now it should be our original image so the front image is the logo that should be the same but the back image should be our actual image but here is the tricky part earlier we were taking the size of it to define where exactly do you want to shift the logo so here we are defining the image uh, back and here we are defining the image back and we are getting the shape of it but we cannot do it now because it's running in the while loop so what we will do is we will copy this part and we will paste it here so once it will uh, get the image before it enters the while loop so therefore this will be very easy for us now we will just remove the image back and it will use the actual image to find the what do you call the size of the height the width and the channels so the rest of it we can remove this part because now we have an original image coming from the webcam and the rest of it is pretty much the same again this can be changed you can even add a track bar to increase and decrease this size that will be interesting to see but that is pretty much it so i believe if i run this it should work So there you go. Uh, it seems my webcam is not working properly. Is it video zero? I think it is zero. Let's try it again. Is it overlay webcam? Yeah, now it's working. Uh, okay, it's stuck. Oh, it was working before as well, but it got stuck because we did not change the value here. So the zero means infinite. So you have to put one uh, for that delay okay so there you go you can see now it is running live and you can see that we have our logo at the bottom and it seems to be that it is real time but we'll have to check the values so in order to see whether it's real time or not what we can do is we have a method in our cv zone in fact it's a class so we can write here cv zone dot fps and what we will do is we will put it in fps reader and then at the bottom we are going to write fps reader dot updates and we will give in our image result we want to display it on image result that's why we are sending in the value and it will give us the fps and then it will give us the image back so we will write here image result so that will store the value of image or it will draw the value of image on it so yeah that should be good so let's try that out and there we have it so now you can see it is around 30 frames per second 
and it doesn't seem to affect at all. So let's let's remove the logo part. So let's say we don't add the logo and we run it. Let's see what happens. Uh, what happened? Oh yeah, so we need to change this to image and this to image. Okay, let's run it. There we go. So it is pretty much the same FPS as before. So it is not performance hungry. So you can simply use it uh, in your projects. So we can remove this part again and we can put image results here and here. So let's run it one last time. And there you go. So now it's working fine and everything is good. Okay, so now the last thing we are going to do today is gear rotation. So we also have a rotation method that we have added in the CV zone package. So this basically will show you the functionality of the PNG images and the rotation as well together. And you can see how well it performs at the end of the day. Always I try to encourage uh, everyone to start working with graphics and to improve their graphics to build something that is user friendly. So therefore we are adding these functionalities so you can relate to your projects. You can add this in your projects. Okay, so what we will do is we will uh, copy which of the parts should we copy. Let's just copy image overlay and we are going to go to a new Python file and we are going to call it gear rotation and we are going to paste this here in fact uh, it will be more relatable to what you call the webcam but it's okay we can we can start from here as well uh, it should not be a big deal okay so the first thing we have to do uh, we will write here a value of angle so angle at the very beginning should be zero and then we are importing our images now the importing of images will happen in the while loop because we don't want to overlay again and again on the same image we want to because it's not coming from a webcam it's just importing one time and then it's overlaying it uh, on it again and again so we need to import this again and again so that it does not uh, repeats the previous command so here we are going to write while true and then we are going to import our uh, images so we have the image back so we will use that and then we have the resizing as well so we can use that as well so we'll put it here and then what we will do is we will make a copy of our gear so first of all, we are not going to call it image front. We will call it image gear one. And then uh, should we resize it? I don't think we need to resize. We can just make it bigger. We can make our original image bigger. Um, let's say 500 by 800. And then we will overlay. Okay, so let's push this in both of these things and then we will put a one here okay so image front is not there anymore so we will write image g1 so let's just check it out if it works so far and then we can move on so let's run the gear rotation and there you go so why is it black it should be white let's multiply it by 255 there you go so now we can see the edges as well so it will be easy to see the rotation. Okay, so this is our first gear. Then we also need another gear that we want to put on it. So instead of copying um, one more time, what we will write here, we will write image gear two is equals to image gear one dot copy. There you go. And then what we can do is we can simply put it on our image as well. So we will overlay again, but this time we will overlay it on the image result. And we will overlay image 
gear two. And it should not be at the same side, um, same width. It should be further apart. And the, the height should be same, whatever it is, it's 100 or 100 uh, or 20, whatever the height is, it should be same, but the width should be more. So let's say 400. Let's try that. And there you go. So now we have two gears and they are a little bit apart. Uh, we need to bring them closer. Let's say 125. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. Uh, but the thing is, we need to rotate the first one a little bit or the second one a little bit so that it meshes properly. So how can we rotate? We will rotate the image first here and then we will uh, overlay it. So how can you rotate? Now we have a very simple function to rotate. We are going to write that image G1 is equals to CV zone dot rotate image. And then we are going to give an image G1. And uh, this is basically the image that we want to rotate. And we have to give in an angle. So let's say we give 10 degrees. So let's run that. So 10 degrees is not enough. Let's say 20 degrees. Oh, 20 is almost, let's say 22. Oh, it's still touching a little bit. Let's say 23. Yeah, there you go. So 23 is perfect. So we need a 23 degree angle and then they will mesh properly. Okay, so that is good. We can bring them closer as well. So let's bring this a little bit back. 380, let's say. Oh, that's too much. Uh, 390. Mm, again, th these edges should be a little bit curved. But anyways, okay, let's keep it at 400. So this is basically the idea of rotation, how you can rotate. But now what we have to do is we have to constantly rotate it. So how can we constantly rotate it? We are going to change our angle each time. So here we are going to write angle is equals to our plus equals one. So every time we are increasing the value of angle and instead of just 23, we will say angle plus 23. That should be good, there you go. So now our first gear has started to move. It is rotating at the speed of one, let's say. And what we have to do is we have to rotate the other one as well. And the other one should not have the angle of 23. So it is starting from zero. So it is like plus zero. So we can write here gear two at this angle and this should be G2. And yeah, that should be good. So let's run that. Um, well, they, they are rotating, but they are rotating in the same direction, which doesn't make any sense. So we need to add a minus here to rotate in the opposite direction. There you go. So now it looks pretty cool that the gears are meshing and they are rotating. So what is the next thing we can do? Well, uh, first of all, we can add our FPS to see if it's working properly or not. So we can go to our webcam, we can copy this part, FPS reader, and we will paste it here and then we will go down and FPS reader and we will paste it here. So if we run that now, it should have the FPS. So it is going quite high. So that's good. 50, 60 frames per second. That's excellent. And then what we can do is we can change the speed of this. So for example, if I put five, it will be faster than before. There you go. So it's much faster than before. Now, what we can do is we can add a track bar here and based on that track bar, we can increase and decrease the speed. So that's the fun part. So adding track bars is not that hard. What you have to do is you have to write here CV2 dots named window 
and we will call it let's say parameters and then we will write cv2 dot resize window and we will write parameters uh, this this line is not compulsory but we are just resizing it to stretch it a little bit uh, in the direction of the width so we will make it a little bit longer 640 by 240 let's say or even 100 should be fine and then we will write cv2 dot create trackbar and we will call it speed the value will be speed and we are giving it in the parameters parameters and then we will have the value of 1 and then 25 so this is the default value it it will be at 1 and this is the maximum value it can go and the iterations will be 1 so the increments will be 1 and then at the end you you do have to give a function that will run whenever the value is changed but we are not going to use that so we will write here empty and we will just go up here and we will define define empty and we will pass in any random parameter and we will say pass so this is something you have to do uh, to avoid this part okay once that is done then we can simply get the value of our trackbar uh, of the speed and we can put it here so what we will do is uh, we can okay let's not get it here let's get it up here so that it can work properly so we will write here that our value of speed or let's just say value is equals to cv2 dot get trackbar get trackbar position and then we have to define which parameter are we talking about it is speed and then we are talking about the window name uh, which is parameters there you go so the last thing is to change this to a value and now if we run it yeah there you go so you have a new window and if you increase the speed it increases now the issue is that at this point it is extremely fast but I can see in the recording it's not fast at all because uh, because of the frame rate but it is really fast but in the recording it's not showing that much so this is basically the idea you can move it around so there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this and uh, you know wherever your mind takes you wherever your imagination takes you let it flow and see what you can do with these two different methods that we have added one is for png overlay and the other one is for rotation so this was basically the main idea how this works how you can overlay an image a png image with transparency and how you can rotate with very simple parameters just by giving the angle of rotation so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new i hope uh, you are going to benefit from this information and you will include this in your projects. And if you do, do share it on our Facebook group, on our Discord channel. So this is it for today. If you haven't subscribed, do subscribe and I will see you in the next one.